So I'm Bruce K1BG again, and I gave this talk right around the time COVID started. What's interesting is that I looked at the file and I saved this on March 20th of 2020. So that's kind of like right about the same time everything just stopped. I thought I gave this presentation in person but maybe not, but maybe I did something to store it, so I don't know. But anyway, um, I got asked the question about youth activities, and I just thought, well, what have we been doing here over the years for youth activities? And we actually have done a fair amount of stuff. Um, field Day, uh, we pretty much know about. Um, it's the big weekend in June where we go out into a uh, a, a location that's not normally an amateur radio location and operate. Um, there are a set of rules set up, so they make it kind of a contest. Uh, we really don't compete. My attitude is if we make less points that we made the year before but have more fun, we've had a successful field day. But there are bonus points for youth participation, for educational activities, for those kinds of things. And we have had years when, um, some years we've had more youth uh, than others. So, and this is typically what we've done in the past. Notice it's the same tower that we've done for Thinking Day on the air. And the last couple of field days, we've just decided that if we go a little bit simpler, we can save ourselves some time and effort. I'd like to hope we get back to the days when we can put up the big tower because it's actually nice having a nice signal from the from the tower and having directional antennas and things, but it's not a, a deal killer by uh, doing something simple. I want to say this is 2017, maybe. Okay, I'm not sure the pictures. I can just tell by some of the people who are in the pictures. So, um, anyway, but field day we've had over the years. Uh, num number of young people participating, and it's a good introduction to amateur radio. We talked about Thinking Day on the air, so I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time here, only because a lot of the pictures are the same pictures, and um, you already know about this. One of the things we started doing, we participated a couple of years before COVID, was the Bromfield High School uh, Science Fair. Now, Bromfield, uh, Bromfield is the public high school in Harvard, Massachusetts. There's a long history as to why it's called the Bromfield School, and I won't get into that. But it's grades 9 through 12. There's several uh, different judging things that go on. So they have faculty uh, judging, uh, which is done internal at the school, and then they have com community organizations that come in and judge. So uh, it's really interesting. It's done in the uh, gymnasium at the high school, um, and you just get all different kinds of projects. Uh, this one was called Sam I Am, which was a, uh, a simple uh, Aurora monitoring system. You, you remember that one? You know, so, um, uh, so that was one... Um, there, there, there were always several that are kind of in line with, uh, with what we're interested in. Um, sometimes uh, there's hard, actual hardware. Sometimes it's homebrew hardware. It uh, can be interesting stuff. Sometimes we've seen presentations, and it's like a book report that's taken off of Wikipedia kind of thing. And so... Those people don't get awarded any prizes. Um, we have done our own poster in the past. I don't know if we got any interest in that, okay? But there is an award ceremony. This is typically the science fair starts when school ends on a Friday, it's about three o'clock. And from three o'clock till about five o'clock, everybody can walk around looking at the different uh, exhibits and things. And then the judges get together, decide on their prizes, and they actually have an award ceremony that night. Typically, for the award winners, uh, we give an RTL SDR. 
uh, which is, uh, it's a small prize. And uh, Phil has also arranged to do a personal, personally guided tour of Haystack Observatory, which I think uh, some of the kids really are excited about and others have like passed up on the opportunity. This I don't understand. But um, I think I should do a better job at the awards ceremony of pushing this with the parents present because come the end of the day, it's my belief that the parents are still pushing the buttons and pulling the strings in the, in the background. By the way, I have put on a few pounds uh, over COVID, but we won't go there. Um, and we typically, for the winners, we do a certificate so that they have something that they want to hang on their wall kind of thing, right? Um, one of the things we've also done, besides doing jamborees on the air, uh, in, in 2019, in the fall, again, right before COVID, um, we went out to a, a Boy Scout camporee at Camp Collier out in Gardner. I don't know if anybody's been out there who's familiar with Camp Collier. It's, we've got some pictures coming up. But we actually uh, set up a station. We set up a SDR demo. We had two meters running. We did some hidden transmitter hunts and some portable operation. We really kind of gave them uh, a pretty good introduction to amateur radio. Unfortunately, COVID came along and kind of stopped any follow-up that was coming out of that. But according to Owen, there were, or well, Owen, there were several um, several young people that were interested in amateur radio coming out of that weekend. It was cold and the wind was blowing, and but um, Camp Collier is uh, a, be a beautiful spot. So we set up inside uh, one of the buildings there that are on the lake. Um, we had the a HF station going, um, and, um, and I don't even remember. Phil, do you remember what they were doing on the right side? I think that's a rig expert. It's one yeah. of Dan's yeah. things, yeah. right? Right there. I had a feeling that they were looking at the SWR on either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. But that's what that was. Oh, geez. So there you are. Yep. Oop. So, and I um, think that's right. all I have. We had just done a, a general look at the waterfall display and it's just kind of. I'm afraid that people don't tune radio dials around anymore, I and mean, they have almost no idea what, who's, who's next to you in fact, if they know what's better than so you have to have to use basic search. But I, I think the real thing on this, I wanted to give people a feeling for, as much as anything else, what we actually do for the science fair and what's involved. And you basically walk around judging these different different projects. Oh yeah, this was an interesting one. This was an, a, an eighth grade presentation where this girl took a, you know, this, uh, w when you got a uh, salad and you want to spin the salad, you put it in a plastic container and you push the button in it, in it, right? So she basically, um, took magnets, uh, and put them inside the part that spins, okay? And she was creating electricity. She called it step electricity because in her mind, rather than push it by hand, you would step on it and basically generate electricity by just spinning the, the, the salad gizmo, right? And what was, it, it was really pretty good because she had Maxwell equations in there. She had an understanding of the physics that were involved and how it worked. And I think we were really, I, I, personally, I came away kind of tickled with this, with this one because it was very simple, but she understood what was going on. So, um, but anyway, it's, uh, if anyone is interested in judging, let me know and I'll see how we can, how we can figure that in. Um, I've got to forward this year's projects. My understanding is they're at about half of where they were pre-COVID. So there's a lot less interest amongst the kids, but it may take a while to get that going again. You know, you got, 
it's 2023. And so if they didn't do it for a few years, you have kids that have come up through the school that are not used to it. So 